What are you doing? She's like, I'm exploring. What do you think I'm doing? Look at that cute little girl. Hi, Mama. She's so independent. And she's so smart. It, I don't know what to tell you about this little girl. She really is something else. You're a cute girly. He's just keeping himself warm over there, but he's been, <laughs> he's been walking and he's been eating. And as you can see, I know, I know, that's, see, that's more normal duck behavior. He doesn't want to be grabbed by me or anybody, even though they're very mellow and everything. But look, do you remember yesterday? I was all over him and he was just fine. Let me see if I get get closer. You're not eating straw, sir. See, I can still grab him because he's not strong enough. But he um, showed improvement. But the first thing that happens is that they lose strength in their legs. That's when you know that you have a, a dog that is sick. That's how you know you have a sick duck. You have water down here. You wanna come and drink some water? Sir? Come here. I'm gonna show you to the water. You're, you're okay. You're okay, sir. Oh, whoa, sir. You're just not doing great yet. But you're a fighter now. Look, there's water around down here. Show him what the water is. But look. Still struggling to walk. But that happens when they stop eating. When they stop eating, their legs will become super weak because they are. Just the nature of them. I know, sweet boy. Oh, there you are walking. There you are walking. Come on, sweet boy. Let's go back to your bed. Back to your bed. Okay? You know I'm not gonna hurt you. Why are you running from me? Okay, you can stay here. Annie! Annie! Oh my gosh. Here come. No, no, this way. Matt, this way. You're making it harder on yourself. This way. This way. Now you can see Annabelle's udder. It's pretty big. <laughs> She only has three kids, but those kids eat like it's the end of the world. And the only reason why they do that, even though they're girls, it's because they're big in size. Like, they're big in... Look at this. I bear... I'm gonna put you down. This is such a great stream. Wash my hands. But Annabelle is amazing at letting her milk down and she has the softest, best udder. I'm gonna see if I can show you from the back. Almost like I'm always in the way. But okay, I'm gonna do side one side and then the next. I usually start with both because I'm trying to get them used to it and putting a, something underneath them so they don't step on it. It's like she has a flowing stream of milk and it's so, so easy to milk that it's easy to also get cramps because of the repetitive motion. But, and as you can see, now you can see the motion. I have two fingers in the back and then what I'm pressing is the thumb. And again, when I'm getting tired, then I go back to my normal way of milking. She is such a dream 
to milk. I cannot even tell you how amazing it is to milk this girl because she milks super fast, um, super easy. She never fights to give milk. I don't have to bump her unless I'm trying to get a certain amount of milk she's not giving me. But as you can see, I'm also making a mess because it's how much milk. And looking at the camera never helps. Uh, she's pretty good by, you know, staying, but she's really bad when she runs out of food. There are some those that will let me continue to milk them as soon as they, you know, even if they don't have any food. Well, I should rephrase that. If they run out of food, not if there is food, if there isn't food to begin with, but look at this. Her udder structurally is not the greatest because she lacks the medial uh, ligament strength that she needs to um, have her teeth in a better place. Like she needs better teeth placement. But the good news is that she has everything else that I like and that I'm looking in a dough. So I can breed her to Dom, who I'm hoping, who I'm hoping is gonna pass those amazing other genetics to to his kids. And that way, uh, you know. Their kids will be an improvement. Now, because of that, I am keeping the first doe that was born from Annabelle. Um, there was this lady who really wanted a doe and I offered her to this lady, but in the end, I realized that the only way to know what Dom is doing on each doe, and by each doe, what I mean is, if I bred Dom to Mocha, I need to know what Dom did to Mocha's udder. If I breed, if I breed Dom to Annabelle, I need to know the improvements that Dom, you know, did to his daughters with Annabelle. So what I'm, what I'm trying to say is, even if I keep one girl from Dom, they're gonna be from different moms. And I don't know the kind of improvements he is doing for each doe. So how would I know what Dom is going to do for his girls in the future when I breed him to Annabelle if I don't keep a girl from Annabelle? Typically, typically, what happens is that whatever the dad passes on to the girls, that's it. He will continue to pass it on. Uh, and, it, and it's genetics. It's not something that I can sit here and explain to you, but if you're able to see that the dad is passing on better other genes, then he'll continue to do it throughout his life. It's not like a, you're lucky that this happened. So since Annabelle's udder is different from Mocha's and Mocha's from Clara, and Clara from Gaia. I feel like I need to keep one of these girls to see the improvements that Dom is doing to those specific does and those specific udders. And then once I know what he's producing, then I'm able to sell all the kids because I'll have, you know, one from that mom and same dad and all the things that, you know, will be a uh, constant once I figure that out. So if you pair a mom with a dad, both should contribute to each one of those readings and the dad passing on whatever genes he's gonna pass on. There's a possibility that he's not going to pass on those amazing genetic others. Um, there's a possibility that he won't be sharing with those genetics with this girls so I need to figure it out from the first breeding because Dom will be but well, actually he turned one year old um, March 30th so a few days ago 
So in order to keep him as a breeding bag, he needs to do something better to the others of his girls. Mixed with the doughs that we have here in the pot. So that's pretty much the long-winded story of why I am keeping those four girls. And the last year wasn't producing as much as Mocha was producing. This year she kind of caught up. She will do between two and two and a half cups. Never three, but two and two and a half, which is still pretty good. Um, so I am pretty happy with Annabelle and how she's been um, changing with the years. She also had very tiny teeth. So I'm gonna try to put a, a picture or something overlay so you can see how small it was. But now, um, her teeth are getting, getting longer it's, and it's just because of nursing and milking and all those things that really help a doe uh, kind of get a little bit more length out of their teeth. So Guy and Briere have smaller teeth but they're first fresheners and it's going to take them a couple of breedings to see. But you know, they're not going to be uh, the longest teeth in the world either. So Annabelle gave me two cups. She still has some, you can see. This is what I wanted to show you, how it looked like. It still has milk for her girls. But when I am trying to squeeze it out, it's almost like the tea doesn't want to fill. And the stream, let me see if I can show you in the cup. This is when you know that with each squirt, it's going less and less. That's how you know she's trying to save the rest of the milk. Now you can bump them and have them give you more milk. I'm just not doing it right now. I mean, I could get maybe half a cup more. And that's usually how she gets to two and a half cups when I really push it. But it is almost 11 o'clock in the morning. And I really don't want to have the other ones wait for much, much longer.